Okay, so we're gonna get ready to paint this part, show you some techniques and that. But if, if you know John Cole, you know that I am a ground fanatic. I believe that the single most important thing to powder coating success is a good ground. Okay, so on this cart, we've got a lot of painted surfaces, so hanging this hook on that cart is not going to get me a ground through the cart. So I'm going to take our ground cable right here and connect it direct to the clean powder hook. And now I've got uh, ground my part. So as we approach coating this, we've got three Faraday areas here. So we always want to coat Faraday areas first, okay? Uh, so, so what you'll see when we do these Faradays, I'm going to do all three of them. What you're going to see is we got a lot of coverage beyond the Faraday just while we're targeting. Now it's important to know that the handgun tip, the tip of the powder gun, optimum distance to the part is 8 to 10 inches. That's where we want you spraying at. We don't want you getting into the corners here 2 or 3 inches away because it's a Faraday. What are you going to get? You're going to get an aerodynamic effect. The air coming out of the gun is going to blow the powder off of the Faradays. So we certainly don't want to be in tight on those. If we're too far away, let's say we're 16 or 18 inches away, we also have an aerodynamic issue. And that is that we don't have enough velocity to get the powder all the way to the part. So the sweet spot for powder coating is 8 to 10 inches away. Again, we're going to do the Faradays first. So we're going to start over here. We're going to go from this Faraday here, and we're going to come over to this Faraday here, and then we're going to do this Faraday here. Okay, now, you notice that hand speed. That wasn't a real rushy, rushy coating. It was a nice, maintainable hand speed, okay? So, I don't need you to go like this. Going fast doesn't do anything for you. Going like this, wiggling the gun like a magic wand, that doesn't do anything for you. In fact, that's actually detrimental because if you're moving your hand so fast, you can have the powder lagging the charge zone and not charging the powder effectively. So we want to go real nice and easy into the Faraday cage areas first. Well, let's take a look at these Faradays now. You can see we've got good coverage in all the corners all the way around. Now what you'll notice here in the Faradays, as I got those, I was also getting a lot of the surface here with powder. So that's why we do the Faradays first. We coat them first and then we see how much we need to put on the adjacent areas. If you did the adjacent areas first and then you're in there trying to get powder to the corners, you're going to get a heavier film build in this section. So now that we've got the corners, we're going to dress the flat surfaces here. We can either do it side to side, top to bottom, or we can go up and down this way. I tend, because I've got the spray pattern aligned with my hand, I tend to like to go this way. So we're going to come in here up at the top first. We're going to finish spraying. Notice the hand speed. I'm not racing. It's a nice, gentle hand speed. I've got all the surfaces coated. So again, the key takeaway here is Faraday's first and slow hand speed. You don't want to rush, it's not a race. You're building up a thickness of powder. I can build it up slowly and do it at one point, or I can go back and forth real fast and have to do a hundred back and forth in order to get the same thickness of powder. That's your, that's your takeaways. Now what I want to show you here is I'm going to turn this part around and you're going to see the back of this part you're going to see what's called electrostatic wrap. That means even though I was spraying the front of the part only, electrostatically we got wrap around the back of the part. We're going to see powder on that part. Okay, so here's the back of the part. You see we got wrap coming all the way around. Now we're going to finish up and paint the back of the part. Again, I like to start at the top and move down. Do you know why I'm doing that? Because any powder that's not sticking to the part up here is going to fall down. It's going to get another chance to get pulled into the part. So I'm going to spray. And you can see we've got pretty darn good coverage here just once, once through. Notice again, hand speed, not fast. 
I'm not going like this. This is not how you power coat. I can't tell you how many times I've been out in the field watching experienced powder coaters, or at least they claim to be experienced, doing this. You see all the powder flying around? That's because it's not getting charged and getting to the part. Because we believe the powder coating process is holistic, not only do you have to have a good gun, good charging technology, good ground, but you need to have a good booth. A good booth can add to your transfer efficiency or your overall process efficiency by not pulling powder away from the part as you're spraying. And so you can see with a good gun, all that powder is going to the part. It's not getting sucked to the filters. I'm going to turn our, our booth up. We put VFDs on our booth. I'm going to turn it up to a higher speed. That's typical of what you get with a low cost booth. And I'm going to show you the effect that it has. All right, so now we've got the booth velocity up to where our, our, a lot of the lower cost booths are spraying. You can hear it's a little noisier. But now you can see the powder's being pulled away from the part and being directed back towards the filters. So, in a holistic view, you want to have an optimized process, the proper gun, the proper ground, and the proper boot blast things. Something that Parker is very experienced in.